Hey guys, today I'm here with my friend Matthew, and we're gonna investigate the sweet spot on a baseball bat. So you know a lot more about baseball than I do. So what is the sweet spot? So well, the sweet spot on a bat is where you're gonna get the most power when you make contact, and where you're gonna feel the least amount of vibrations when you actually hit the ball. In addition to those two factors, the main factor that is used in most physics textbooks is the center of percussion, or COP. The COP is a region on a baseball bat where a perpendicular impact from a ball will result in zero net force. Here I have a piece of wood suspended on a rope. And as we can see, if I hit above the center of percussion, there is a lot of translational motion and not a lot of rotational motion. But if I hit below the center of percussion, there's a lot of rotational motion and not a lot of translational motion. But now, if I hit right here on the center of percussion, we can see that these forces, for the most part, cancel each other out. Now the center of percussion on a baseball bat is directly related to the hand sensation. So as you can see, if you hit up here, there's a lot of uh, translational force that goes back and forth. And if you hit it down at the end of the bat, there's a lot of rotational force that swings it back and forth. But once we find in the perfect spot, like right here, you can actually hear a different sound. And at this point, uh, the rotational energy of it going down and the uh, translational energy of it going back and forth cancel each other out. And this point right here is a sweet spot. Now there is one more factor that determines a sweet spot on a baseball bat, and that is maximum performance. And today, we're going to measure maximum performance in the same way that the NCAA does, using collision efficiency. Collision efficiency is a measure of how much energy is lost from an impact between a ball and a bat. So if a baseball is pitched at 50 miles per hour, hits a stationary bat, and then travels 10 miles per hour afterwards, it has a collision efficiency of 20%. This means that 80% of the energy from the baseball was absorbed by the bat. Now Chowder and I have an extremely sophisticated way to measure the collision efficiency. So Chowder is going to stand right here and pitch a ball. And it's going to go along this tape measure and hopefully hit this bat right here. Now this bat is strapped down, but it can pivot freely. Now the idea behind this is that there will be no force added to the ball. So we will see how efficient this bat is. And we will be able to measure the speed of the bat using this GoPro that we have up here. Uh, and we can see how fast the ball moves compared to this tape measure. And hopefully the point that will have the maximum performance will be right here where we saw where the center percussion was before and thus where the sweet spot is. Whoa! So I hit the sweet spot on the first try, now we're gonna try hitting around it to compare the difference. Perfect! So Chowder is able to get a few good hits on the baseball, which is pretty good considering that he's not a pitcher. And uh, yeah, so let's go check out the results and see if the sweet spot and the center percussion was actually the area of max performance. So I'm back home and ready to take a look at the footage. And first off, let's start with the sweet spot footage, which was the first one that Matthew was able to hit. Over the course of one, two, three, four frames, the ball traveled over three masking tape marks, each of which being two and a half feet long. That means that it traveled seven and a half feet in four frames. Now if we take the seven and a half feet and divide it by the four frames, we get an average uh, speed of 1.87 frames per second. And we know that there are 30 frames in a second. So 1.875 times 30 is 56.25 feet per second, or about 38 miles per hour. Now the line that I inserted is exactly the same length as the distance between two of the masking tape marks, meaning that it's two and a half feet. So as we can see, it takes the shadow one, two, three, four, five, six frames to cover that two and a half feet. So two and a half feet divided by six frames is 0.4166 repeating feet 
per frame. And that 0.4166 repeating times 30 frames per second means that that shadow after the impact with the bat was traveling at 12.5 feet per second. Now if we divide the 12.5 feet per second after the collision and the 56.25 feet before the collision, we get a collision efficiency of 22.22%. .22 now it's time to take a look at the non-sweet spot ball. So as you can see right here, it takes one, two, three, four, five frames for it to travel. That's seven and a half feet. So seven and a half feet divided by five frames means that the shadow is going on average 1.5 feet per frame. And 1.5 feet per frame times 30 frames in a second is 45 feet per second, or around 40 miles an hour. After the impact, it took the shadow one, two, three, four, five, six frames to get halfway across the line, and then from there, it just slowed down a lot. 1.25 feet in six frames, meaning it went point two zero eight three three repeating feet per frame we multiply that by 30 frames per second and that means that that shadow of the ball was traveling at 6.25 feet per second now we can take that 6.25 feet per second after the impact and divide that by the 45 feet um previous to the impact and we get a collision efficiency of 13 point nine percent now the collision efficiency for the non sweet spot impact was thirteen point eight percent compared to twenty two point two percent for the sweet spot meaning that the sweet spot was more efficient and thus had more performance just because I know all the physics behind the sweet spot on a baseball bat doesn't mean I'll actually hit it oh I actually hit it Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed creating this video, then please leave a like or subscribe. Thanks.